Anyone who's been playing League for any amount of time should recognize all those sounds. They're iconic to the game at this point. Smashing a tower with Jax, Caitlyn ult, Nasus Q, Ramus wind up, but that's just scratching the surface. I left out plenty of recognizable sounds, even some of the most recognizable ones like Hasaki! I think sound is an area of the game that we can all agree Riot has done a pretty amazing job over the years. Almost all abilities have a unique sound that's immediately recognizable, they sound good in your ear, they sound like what they're trying to represent, and most importantly, they're satisfying when you use the ability. Now as far as sound design goes, that last part is something that's unique to video games. Movies and TV don't need to worry about how a sound feels, but I think with the Akali and Irelia reworks, for the first time, Riot missed the mark in this regard. Their ability sounds sound good and accurately represent what's happening, but they don't feel good from a gameplay standpoint. And I think that contributes a lot to why they feel unfair to play against. So what do I mean? What makes a sound good in a video game? Well, like I listed off, there's three main criteria. Does it sound good? Is the sound of high quality? Does it sound nice in your ear? Does it evoke the right emotion? Audible chocolate. Of course, when I say, does it sound good? I don't mean pleasant. Horror sounds that make you nervous or scared without being grating on your ears are good sounds, but they're not pleasant sounds. So we can kind of call that sound quality. Next, does it represent the cause of the sound? So does a gun sound like a gun? Does a car sound like a car? Sometimes it's super easy to accomplish in a game. If it's got real guns, record that real gun sound. There you go. But for fantasy or sci-fi, we often need sounds for things that don't exist. Like what does a laser sword sound like? We all already know. Not as clumsy or random as a blast. An elegant weapon for the more civilized age. Before Star Wars, nobody had any idea. They had to imagine it and create that sound from scratch. So with League, before Kog'Maw came out, what did a void monster vomiting sound like? Nobody knew. They had to create it. But when you hear that sound, I think it's completely appropriate. We'll call this accuracy. Now the last criteria is unique to video games, and that's, does it feel good? For me, this is the most important one. Does the sound provide the player with the correct information, the correct feedback from a gameplay standpoint? You hear that? That's how delayed it is. That's what I think makes the sound feel good in a game. So let's call this one feedback. Okay, let's look at a classic example, Mario. Collecting a coin, getting a life, and getting hit. Two positive sounds and one negative one. Coins are everywhere in Mario games, so you're going to be collecting them a lot, and they're good to collect, but they're not the most important thing. I mean, mathematically, right, they're one hundredth the value of a life. So the sound reflects this. It's upbeat and positive, but it's very simple and very short. It lets you know that collecting coins is good, but it's not a huge deal. It also is set up to be able to play repeatedly when you're collecting a lot of coins at once. One-ups, however, are similarly cheerful, but they're longer and more elaborate, reflecting their increased value. And then completing a level takes this even further. that makes sense, right? Something that's a bigger reward should have a grander sound associated with it. And that makes sense even as a little kid. You didn't think about how this worked. But your brain did. Now in contrast, the getting hit sound is immediately recognizable as something bad happened. It's like, <coughs> or <coughs> you immediately feel that sting. Now imagine if you were playing Mario and every coin you picked up played that sound instead of the coin sound. Even if you had never played Mario before, that would mess with your perception of the game. That for me is what makes a sound feel good or bad in a game. It's not just whether it sounds cool, it's about providing the correct information about what's going on in the game. Back in League, things get a lot more complicated. Ability sounds need to tell you a lot more information than just good or bad. They need to tell you, does something heal? Does it slow? Does it CC? Does it buff? Shield? and does it do damage. So credit where credit is due. I think Riot has got almost all of these figured out. Like when something heals you, you know that it healed you just from the sound. But there's one category that should be impossible to solve that I think Riot has a brilliant solution for, and that's damage dealt. 
Think back to the coin versus one-up example. A one-up is a more substantial reward, so it has a more complicated sound. With that logic, if you take any two random abilities in League, whichever does more damage should have a weightier sound, a more impactful one. And for the most part, I'd say they do. But that leads to another question. Going into a game, Riot has no idea how much damage an ability is going to do. It depends on you, your target, your items, their items, runes, so many factors. So how do they manage to pull this off? And I think they did it by erring on the side of caution, basing the sounds on the maximum damage an ability could deal, rather than what it's likely to deal. So if an ability has a chance to do insane damage, even if it requires some weird off-meta build like full AP Nautilus, it has a powerful and recognizable sound. This kind of goes against what I said about correct information making a sound feel good. If there are often times where a powerful sound accompanies no damage, shouldn't that feel bad? But I don't think it does because of player psychology. If the enemy Nasus cues you or your ally, and your brain hears that smash, that deep sound, and sees half of your life bar disappear, it understands what happened. It sounds like that ability should hit hard, so it feels justified when it does. Now if the enemy Nasus cues you and it does no damage, your brain probably has a split second of that dissonance where it's expecting the worst, but when it doesn't come, that's such a positive outcome, I think the relief just overrides any negative feeling that you would normally have. Then from Nasus's perspective, the sound is a lot less important when it comes to providing information. You, as the Nasus, already are much more in tune with how much damage you're doing, how many stacks you have. If you cue someone and do no damage, you already knew that was going to happen. And if you cue someone and one-shot them, well, we all know how that feels. Okay, Cannon! They came! They came! Put it down! Boom! It's fucking real, people! And how much that great sound is a part of it. But there's one more perspective to look at, and I think it's a telling one. And that's Nasus's allies. Who gets mad when you do no damage? It isn't the enemies, and it isn't you. It's usually your allies. Your allies, much like your enemies, have an expectation partially based on the sound of your cue. They're expecting it to do damage from the big hit. And when it doesn't, unlike your enemies who get relief, and unlike you who knew in advance, they get the full force of that disconnect between powerful sound and a weak result. And I think it adds to the frustration. Even if it annoys your allies, I think this method of erring on the side of caution was a really genius move by Riot. It would be so much worse for an ability that doesn't make a sound to hit hard than one that sounds hard to do no damage. Beyond making it feel more fair for the player and the enemies, it's really good for clarity. If an ability is going to hit you hard, you should know when it hits you. And that's where the problem comes in with Irelia and especially Akali. This is the first time for me where they've made an ability that does massive damage but doesn't have a powerful sound associated with it and it feels really frustrating to play against, and it also lacks Riot's usual clarity. Sometimes it's hard to tell what Akali killed you with. Which one of these abilities sounds like it does more damage? I'm going with A, no question. For people who don't know, those two sounds are old Akali's Q and new Akali's passive. I'm using those abilities because they were each champion's highest damage ability, their core burst ability. Well, until this patch. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Let me play them again. Notice anything? New Akali's passive sounds like the gentlest gust of wind, yet it does half your life bar. So many times when people are killed by it, they're just confused as to what happened, because it's such a subtle sound, it gets completely lost in a teamfight. Now maybe it's a more realistic slashing sound than the old one, and that's one of our three criterias for what makes a good sound, but there's no question that the old Q was more impactful and clearer when it came to gameplay. You knew what hit you when that sound went off. And this problem doesn't just apply to Akali's passive. This is a consistent pattern across Akali's abilities. None of the sounds have any weight to them, 
and don't reflect the damage they do. Ironically, the E, which basically does no damage, sounds like it does the most. Now I will say, all of these sounds represent what's happening really well. But when it comes to video games, and especially competitive video games, what's more important, sounding realistic or gameplay clarity? I'm picking gameplay every time. Moving on to Aurelia, listen to the difference in the old Q versus the new Q. It's night and day. And funny enough, just like Akali, the ability that does the least damage has the most impactful sound, Irelia's W. Now, Irelia's got other issues that make her unfair, like what the hell is her hitbox and does it change when she cues? But I still feel that these sound changes have, have a larger impact than people would expect. Sound may not be the only reason Akali and Irelia feel frustrating to play against, but I'm certain it's a significant contributing factor. Not being able to hear what hit you in a game that prides itself on clarity is a huge problem. When Zed pops you, you know what killed you. When Shaco appears with Duskblade, you know what killed you. But when Akali one-shots you with her passive, what did she do? And I think even when you do hear what hit you, if it sounds like a tickle and acts like a freight train, it's confusing. For one so far to the back line, Jensen finds a second. X50 is low for the now with new Mord on the PBE. I'm glad to see there are no sound issues with him. He still has the massive bonk when he cues you. And like I said at the start, overall, I think Ride's done an amazing job with sound. There are so many recognizable and iconic sounds in the game, and especially ones that will kill you. But please, give these ladies some much needed bass. And don't make this a trend of prioritizing appearance over gameplay, because that's the death of any game. If you agree or disagree, let me know down in the comments and leave a like and a subscribe. Later.